Welcome to NTN Nightly, I am Janelle Novel, this edition's top stories. The Republic of China-Taiwan signs a twin school MOU to benefit the Gordon and Walcott Memorial Methodist School. The Royal St. Lucia Police Force records for the successes in crime fighting and protecting the nation's elders. The government of St. Lucia through the Ministry of Education has signed a memorandum of understanding with the government of the Republic of China, Taiwan, that gives effect to a twin school program. The initiative is designed to build a partnership that allows teachers and students to continue to exchange their thoughts, ideas and creativity during and beyond the school realm. It is the first of its kind between St. Lucia and Taiwan. Lisa Joseph has more. The Gordon and Walcott Memorial Methodist School now has official ties with Gutin Elementary School in Taipei, Republic of China, Taiwan. The twinning of the schools forms part of Taiwan's expanding program of cooperation with St. Lucia. Over the years of diplomatic relations with Taiwan, the people of St. Lucia have benefited from assistance in the agriculture, ICT and education sectors. His Excellency Douglas Shen is the Ambassador of the Republic of China, Taiwan. Even though Taiwan and St. Lucia are a thousand miles away, but we can learn from each other because we have different culture, we have different history, we have different language. So we have many, many different uh, aspects to explore, to learn from each other. So I believe uh, go through the ICT in education, this program supported by Taiwan uh, ICTF, we have many, many uh, aspects to cooperate. And uh, I believe that after this program, it will benefit you both students, teachers of Taiwan and St. Lucia. Principal of the Gordon and Walcott Memorial Methodist School, Margaret Gabriel, believes the MOU will provide an opportunity for students and teachers to explore a new culture through technology. I expect that um, we could reap tremendous benefits from the program with our students and our teachers with this um, opportunity, this wonderful opportunity to exchange ideas, exchange experiences and with the Gutin Elementary School in Taiwan. So we are very happy for the benefits that could um, derive from this opportunity, educational, cultural and, and otherwise, and just to create that level of collaboration and cooperation between our two schools. The Twin School Program plans to provide a communication platform for schools in the two places. Through exchanges and cooperation, sister schools expand the school network, enhance understanding and communication. The program encourages the understanding of the cultures of the two countries and jointly improve the quality of education. Chief Education Officer Dr. Fiona Philip Meyer says the twinning will have a positive impact on the local education landscape. She's aiming to have more schools involved. And in particular, our focus is on ICT integration and not letting the fact that we're far away from each other be the barrier, but really looking at pulling those expertise together to benefit our students in St. Lucia as well as the students in Taiwan. And so today we're very pleased that the ambassador himself was there. Your Excellency came for the signing and together with the leadership of the Ministry of Education and the principal of the school, we were able to witness this momentous occasion. And for me, in the capacity of chief, it is always to say, we appreciate, we applaud, we value that partnership, and we look forward to it even being better and extended to some of our other primary and possibly our secondary schools as well. The Twin School Program is the first school collaboration program initiated between St. Lucia and the Republic of China, Taiwan. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reports in. Head of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force Commissioner Milton Daisy has reminded the general public that the island remains under a state of emergency and as such, certain activities are not permitted. The state of emergency was imposed as part of government's efforts at combating the COVID-19 pandemic. Whilst the economy has reopened under established protocols and the curfew period adjusted from 12 a.m. to 5 a.m., mass crowd events are prohibited. The commissioner issued the reminder as he spoke to the staging of a protest event on Sunday, 14 June. There was no application for that event actually up to the last um, working day um, before the Sunday that was um, 
around 4, 4 p.m. When, um, when I left office, there was nothing that had come to the um, commissioner's office requesting um, permission. However, I must also indicate that even if permission, um, that request came, it um, may not have been granted simply because, the, um, because of the uh, emergency powers um, COVID-19 um, law that the commissioner would not be in a position to grant permission for those events. Commissioner Milton Daisy appearing there on the COVID-19 Information Command Center on Tuesday. Meantime, the Royal St. Lucia Police Force has recorded further successes in crime fighting. To date, 50 firearms have been seized with 319 operations conducted. Corporal Ann Joseph is the press relations officer. 74 warrants were executed on various premises. We had 37 of these were special operations and um, they resulted in the seizure of 504 um, articles of ammunition. Also 24 persons were arrested from these operations. We had a total of 321 kilograms of cannabis being seized, 300, um, sorry, 33 grams of cannabis resin being seized, 8.827 kilograms of cocaine was seized and 6 grams of crack. Three vessels were seized in the last few weeks by the Marine Unit with controlled substances on board. Three males were arrested Tuesday, 16th June for attempting to smuggle contraband into the bodily correctional facility. There have been 21 homicides, 13 of which have been dealt with, 9 are before the criminal court and 2 are pending inquest. St. Lucia on Monday, 15th June, joined in the Global Observance of Elderly Abuse Awareness Day. Helping St. Lucia's Executive Director, Helen Charles, emphasize that life continues even when one becomes an older person. Charles noted that the organization ensures that older people are able to participate in all activities, whether it be for sport or the development of the country, and that their rights are not infringed upon. She urged members of the public to play their part to ensure the safety of older people. Sometimes persons know that the elderly have been abused, but they tell you it is not my business. What I mean, I'm trying to encourage all of us in different communities, elderly abuse is everybody's business. It is our responsibility. What we are trying to, the message we are trying to send out to St. Lucia and the whole world is to be an elderly keeper because we're trying to get the community to be part, take hold of, um, make sure that you know you are responsible for the elderly in your community. Help Aid St. Lucia following need assessments realized that during the week, elder persons taken care of by home caregivers were able to access meals, and this was not the case for the weekends. Therefore, the organization is seeking to establish two soup kitchens, one in Denry and one in Ancillary. Family case worker with responsibility for the elderly in the Division of Human Services, Andrea Alcid, shared the division's focus. No one person is supposed to be left out. We all as a community, as a nation, as a world, let's come together, let's do what we can to stop elder abuse. Because elder abuse can be the simplest thing as mismanagement of medication, not providing an older person their medication, that's abuse. So let's try our best to remember the elderly, to do what we can for them, to make sure that they're not abused in any way whatsoever. World Elder Abuse Awareness Day, observed annually on June 15th, represents the one day in the year when the whole world voices its opposition to the abuse and suffering inflicted to some of our older generation. Minister for Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment, Honorable Leonard Montoot, in his address highlighted strides being made by the government to ensure the protection and safety of the elderly. An elder care unit was established within the Division of Human Services in October 2018 to assist in providing specialized and committed social services to older people throughout our island. Though small, that unit has done tremendous work to promote the interests and well-being of older people 
and to honor their efforts and contribution to our country. Our government, through the Division of Human Services and major stakeholders, is also in the process of facilitating a review of the national policy on older people for implementation thereafter. We believe that the establishment of this framework will serve as a useful tool for providing structural support and guidance for our interactions with older people. This year's World Elder Abuse Awareness Day was observed under the theme, Lifting Up Voices. And this is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Be aware of and follow water conservation practices. Here are a few tips to help you save water. Wash dishes in a basin of water instead of a running tap. Soak pots and pans instead of letting the water run while scraping them. Check toilets for leaks by putting dye in the tank. If color shows in the bowl without flushing, there is a leak. A leaking toilet can waste thousands of gallons of water. Use a bucket instead of a hose to wash cars and reuse grey water from laundry to water plants. Water conservation reduces energy consumption and strain on the water distribution system. Conserve water whenever possible. And remember, every drop counts. A message brought to you by the Water and Sewage Company Incorporated, WASCO. Welcome back. We now join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle au Creole. Monsieur Tangenel, Monsieur Madame du Patrimoine qui n'est pas responsable, pour information en gouvernement sur le CGIS et Télévision Nationale pour NTN, Caposito Nouvelle au Creole. Caposito. Primus Hutchinson. Travail pour commencer officiellement semaine sala à ce projet de développement aéroport international here on Europe en vie fort. C'est Jérôme Général pour cela ce fois Darren Snack qui fait un autre sala. Et j'ai ni plus que dix l'année gouvernement cette fois-ci avec cela ce fois qui travaille à ce projet pour développer aéroport here on Europe en vie fort pour adresser ces changements à demande avion et pour suivre ces protocoles qui sont en place depuis l'année passée. La tenue est une cérémonie pour marcher la préparation pour le commencement et finaliser le projet Salah. Le projet a été parti et puis c'est 4 sec acteurs et pour ça ça a un haut de 20 services à l'aéroport qui ont été à dans une autre location qui a été placée. Le commencement du projet aéroport, c'est la première à quatre phases et qui est supposé durer pour quatre mois. Le travail à la fondation du projet a commencé en même temps, il y a poussé plus de 3000 piles de steel en frontière pour supporter la fondation. Le gros projet, c'est une compagnie Taiwan qui a conduit la construction pendant l'autre travail, comme ménagement, projet, travail ingénieur, l'autre travail comme ça. Il y a une compagnie sortie de Miami. Deux compagnies, ça a apporté une grande quantité d'expérience à travail construction avec ingénieur. Et, euh, et ça c'est construction et ingénieur et j'ai conduit gros projet en la Amérique et Caribe là aussi cela se passe qui est ça pour tout port pays ni les travailleurs qui sont bien capables et j'ai joué un rôle qui est très important en développement économique à cette le projet de développement du port international j'ai estimé pour coûter 176 millions de dollars Ministre de la responsabilité pour la transportation et le développement économique, on est Kai Joseph, a vu qu'il n'y a pas de pièces de doute que les machines d'opération pour faire service licence par computer qui travaillent très facile. Il y a une discussion récemment pour présenter le programme SALA pour les membres publics, le département de service public et le gouvernement de cette ici, et puis le ministre pour discuter du développement de nouveau SALA à la télévision NTN. Machine nan yote ni ki te kapo dwi se lisans la. Se yon machine ki te ha la kometans. Ba yi sa as, yi slow, yi pa kam, yi ka pran chay tan pou sa print yon lisans. So nou jame nè on sistem nef ki sa po dwi an chay lisans di wan la jounen. So kon moun ka pe, kon sistem la, kon yi pa wet a sou sistem la, Den yo sa jwen print lan pou se dokyouman. Pou le zot ba ay an se diferan minis lan. An chay sa kay ni pou fe ek se moun nan ki ni pou apouvwe se bagay la. 
qui ont envie de faire des marches et que nous avons ministre planning côté d'ici et ni responsabilité pour bailler approval. Ça nous a essayé de faire, c'est même à la manière côté ministre qui ni responsabilité, ni un certain amount, um, quantité de temps pour ça. So, on dit nous point, moins vont application pour un plan kay. Si c'est 30 jours, eh bien, 60 jours yoni pour ban approval là. Si on pas ban approval là, dit on entend ça. Then est loi qui considère that moins ni approval là pour moins ça fait ça moins pour faire. Selon le ministre Guy Joseph, il est très nécessaire pour placer un système en place pour pour faire assurer que yo qui responsable fait travail yo mon est aussi pour se faire. So toutes ces bails ça qui ni en place. Pour yo savent qui date application en tout et qui date yo ni pour bail en réponse à sous application. So ça c'est ces bails là qui qui fait système là marcher plus bien et plus facile pour public là. Les officiers ministère de santé, la les représentatifs à tout département, te joignent ensemble pour te discuter plan qui mérite venir en place en préparation pour la saison cyclone l'année ici. Si. Saison cyclone ça là commencé le 1er juin et caille bout le 30 novembre l'année ça là, ça a fait tous les années. Coordinateur des as de santé docteur Glensford Joseph parlait du objectif de discussion côté les participants de trouver l'occasion pour réviser et mettre en ordre un plan des as pour adresser de toute façon pour approcher un des as pendant yo ka prend en considération maladie corona. Docteur Joseph qui fait public la comprendre qu'a fait public la comprendre qui yo tout ni pour ka préparer pour cyclone avec des as et pour faire assurer que la famille ni un plan en place et tout ça qui nécessaire pour si un cas des as et dit que ministère ka encouragé pour la famille mettre un plan de préparation et pour assurer que la la yo ni toute médication qui cache sa dire pour appuyer yo moi il a conseillé pour poser la famille placer remède à d'un côté il pas qu'il trouver mouillé docteur Joseph ka si joué pour la famille ni tout ces remède là qui est nécessaire sanitaire mars et l'autre affaire comme ça c'est aussi que l'on est là qui est vivant en pile côté 13 pour 19 mauvais temps j'ai trouvé non mais avec 6 pour 9 peut venir cyclone avec 3 pour 6 peut trouver yo méchant cyclone et c'est comme ça que nous avons une nouvelle là. Je vous remercie autant pour regarder. Je vous remercie une invitation. Je ne peux pas me considérer que vous avez la vie. Je vous remercie pour votre nouvelle à quoi vous avez la C'est le moins vieux pour cette chaîne. Merci à Pell Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.